in three, two. Had a uh, user on the forums asking about uh, uh, some of the basics of, of working with uh, solids. Uh, this person's an experienced Bobcat user, but has been working with 2D work off of uh, wireframes and flat drawings, but it's wanting to get into things like advanced roughing that require a solid model. And uh, like most people that are just starting out, he uh, started with the, you know, the basics up here, the, uh, the Boolean solids. And uh, essentially what he's wanted to do is take a piece of half round stock and cut a slot in it. Uh, that's no problem. Use the, uh, the cylinder tool, the, uh, the cube tool to cut the cylinder in half, and then another cube to cut the slot that he wanted in the cylinder. The problem he ran into was he wanted to make tapered lead ends to the, uh, the uh, slot, and using Boolean, that's not quite so easy. So I uh, just wanted to show some of the simple ways to, uh, or one, a simple way to go about doing this. So I've got the... Uh, the half round piece of stock here and uh, we'll just go to a top view and the way I would go about this and there's as usual in, in uh, CAD there's many ways to to uh, approach any particular thing uh, the way I would do it is I would make a uh, flat uh, drawing of the freeform piece that he wants to cut out and then extrude it so I'm not going to worry too much about uh, uh, measurements here. I don't have his particular measurements. This is really a process tutorial. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, using the sketch rectangle I'm going to draw the outer limits of, uh, of, of the uh, cutout. Now using lines parallel we'll take three quarter inch inside that work there and now we'll say an eighth of an inch inside there and that'll work so what I've done is I've established some points here where the taper will start and I've got some points for the taper to end and uh, using the line join tool actually let me put some points there intersection points oh and uh, before I do that one of the first things you want to do when making uh, solids layers are useful for flat drawings but they're really incredibly helpful for solids so I've got my solid set up here I've got it on its own layer I'm just going to turn it off Actually, it's not assigned to that layer, so the first thing I need to do is go select, select my solid, modify attributes, layer, and I'm going to assign it to the layer of solids. Now I can turn it off. And uh, this will allow me to work on these without uh, any odd selection issues. So points, intersection, there, there. there and there. Not really necessary, it's just a, uh, a helpful thing you can do. Uh, another, let me back out of that, drop those. Another thing you can do is using break all or break many, you can simply break all those and uh, in fact that's what I'm going to do. And I'll use quick trim To just leave myself with there. All right, I've got the uh, straight part of my interior slot, and now I'll use line join. to uh, build the taper. Alright, now I've got the uh, taper built and I can get rid of this other construction uh, business. I'll go ahead and use quick trim again. 
drop those out. All right. Um, and just to make it slick, we'll use fillet. Uh, we'll say three quarter inch radius fillet. All right, now from this point, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to uh, make it a planar surface. Okay, now I've got a uh, planar surface there and I want to use extrude. Now you can just work from the wireframe by using extrude curve. I generally like to use extrude surface uh, and go with the planar surface first because it it kind of allows you to catch problems before you get too far into it. If it doesn't make a planar surface, then you've got geometry problems. Uh, if you just go straight to extrude curves, sometimes it'll do funky things and it's kind of hard to diagnose what's going on. So we go to, to extrude surface. Uh, we'll say 0 0.375 along the Z axis. I'm actually going to make that negative 0 0.375. I select, confirm by hitting OK or clicking the space bar, clicking the space, clicking OK or hitting the space bar, sorry. And there is a uh, an irregular solid that you can use to uh, do a Boolean subtract. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over because in this particular case the uh, user did have some fillets going on in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, solid fillet. I'm going to not use whole solid, use tangent propagation. We'll say two tenths, constant fillet. And I'm just going to select the edges that I want to fill it. Rotate that around. All right, that's got those selected. Confirm that. And there we go. There's a nicely filleted piece. Just to uh, make life a little bit easier on me, I'm going to translate that one thousandth positive Z, just so I don't have the top surface of this absolutely tangent or, or congruent with the top surface of my half round stock. All right, now I'll bring the stock back up. And uh, now you're back to just a straight up Boolean subtract. You hit Boolean subtract, you pick the parts you want to keep, the parts you want to take away. Okay. And there you've got a uh, slot with some lead ends, nicely filleted all around. And that's one process for uh, doing what the uh, user wanted to do. As I say, I didn't, uh, I didn't have their dimensions, uh, so I didn't really try to uh, mimic them. Just wanted to show the, the workflow and uh, how that's possible to do that very quickly and easily. The, uh, the standard Boolean solids are great for constructing things. There's lots of ways to, uh, to do things, though. I'll show you a quick example before I leave this off. Let's get back to a uh, top view. Rather than use a cylinder, you can take a uh, rectangle, let's say there, and go to the revolve tool. Um, I can pick width caps to make it a solid. I'm going to pick the axis. I'm going to go with 180 degrees of rotation. I'll select my geometry. and held shift click to uh, pull that together. Click OK and now I pick my axis. And there you have your half cylinder done. You can extract the edges off of
that. I'm gonna make a new layer. Just name it Revolve. Now I'll select. Cancel out of that. Go to Select. Get all that. And go to Modify Attributes. Layer. Set it to Revolve. Turn Revolve off so I can see what's going on. Now I can once again go to planar surface, select the geometry to make that planar surface, okay, and now turning the uh, revolve back on, I can go to utilities, stitching, stitch surfaces to solid. box select everything, rotate it to make sure it's all selected, click OK, back to select, and now you see I've got essentially the same thing I started with over here, half round stock. Uh, surface tools, they're really enormously powerful. They let you get away from uh, the, the constraints of spheres and cubes and cones and uh, cylinders. And there's a whole lot you can do with them. Uh, there's also a lot of videos out uh, on the uh, web. So do a search for Bobcad, just any feature, basically. And you'll likely find a, uh, a video that will be helpful to you. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks, and have a good day.